Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Father, through our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A portion of God's Word I want to consider with you this morning is based on that gospel lesson that you just heard, Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. Dear friends, it happened to us over Labor Day weekend. A household appliance was making some odd noises, shall we say? And over time, it was getting worse and worse and worse. And then finally, yes, over that Labor Day weekend, it went kaput altogether. And so my wife and I had the distinct honor of doing some unexpected appliance shopping over Labor Day weekend. At our first stop, it became apparent to us that we were going to be able to take advantage of some Labor Day sales. Hey, good thing, all right. And we're walking up and down the aisles and we see, we, we see a, a model that would be better than the one that just broke on us after only two years of use. And the price was pretty affordable. It was pretty attractive. And so we get excited. We said, yeah, let's do this. But the price on the tag was not what we paid. Why? Because there were other things to pay for. Number one, a delivery. Because they didn't keep anything in stock, they had to ship everything to you from their warehouse in Chicago. So there was a delivery charge. There was an installation kit that you had to buy. If you wanted somebody to install it for you, which we passed on, you had to pay for that too. There was the protection plan. And based on our experience, we kind of sprung for that. And then, of course, at the end, there was always the sales tax. And so by the end, the number that we actually ended up paying was kind of nowhere near that number that was on the sticker. When all was said and done, it didn't seem like all that great of a deal. Whether it is an appliance, a cell phone, a car, a house, very often, the price you see advertised is not the price that you actually pay. There are always extra costs, extra options, extra features, extra services, a protection plan, insurance, and yes, that wonderful, wonderful sales tax. And so before you make a big purchase, you have to take all of those things into account to get to that bottom line number. Here's the number that is actually going to be coming out of my pocket, out of my bank account. It's called cost analysis. And it's boiled down to three simple questions. What is the true bottom line cost? Can I afford to pay that? And then finally, am I willing to pay that? Jesus, in our gospel lesson, talks about cost analysis this morning, and he gives a couple different examples. First of all, a building project. Jesus said, if you want to build, for example, a tower, first you need to sit down and count the cost. You have to take into account everything that is going to cost you money, every possible contingency, so that you avoid the terrible situation where you end up building half a building and then you run out of money, and then that unusable, not finished building simply becomes an eyesore and a monument to your lack of foresight and your lack of money. Or example number two that Jesus gives. Military generals have to be able to count the costs when they go into war or when they go into battle. They have to measure, here's the size of our army and here's the size of the army of the enemy. Here's what we are armed with, here's what they are armed with. Here are the strategies we're going to employ, here are the strategies that they're going to employ. And after putting all that together and measuring all the costs, decide whether or not to actually march into battle. And if it seems like there's no way to win, well then you offer terms of surrender because that's better than getting annihilated by a superior force. A military campaign, a building project, some purchase 
that you make, no matter what, you have to count the cost. Following Jesus comes at a cost. And Luke chapter 14 is not the first time Jesus talks about such a cost. Rewind to Luke chapter 9 and here's what Jesus said. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What's the cost of following Jesus? It means self-denial and it means taking up a cross. Well, what does that mean? Here in Luke chapter 14, Jesus kind of ups the ante and he, and he gives some more details. Listen to his words again because maybe the first time we heard them, we found them a bit surprising, a bit shocking. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, and yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Wait a minute. The cost of following Jesus is how high? I have to hate my parents, my siblings, my children, even my spouse? Jesus, aren't you being a little bit severe here? And yes, he is. And in so doing, Jesus makes his very, very valuable point. Now, first of all, let it be said, Jesus is not telling all of us to go home and start treating all our family members like garbage. Jesus wants us to love our family, to love our friends, yes, to love our enemies, and to pray for those who persecute us. But there's a little bit of meaning in that word hate in English that we don't hear in the original, uh, we don't hear it in English, what, what, is, what is in the original Greek. Yes, this word means to hate, but it also carries the idea of disregarding one thing or one person in favor of another thing or another person. In other words, Jesus wants his followers to hold him in first place in their lives. Jesus wants his followers to follow him wholeheartedly. He wants to be number one. And so anything in our lives or any person in our lives that would be a hindrance and an obstacle to that, Jesus says that is the cost. You may have to lose that thing or that person to follow me because I want all of you. So Jesus urges his people, he urges all of us this morning, count the cost. Let's say that your job is the envy of everyone you know because your job pays extremely well. There's a benefits package that is second to none. There's retirement included. There's a bunch of opportunities for, for advancement But this job also prevents you from worshiping regularly, from gathering together with your fellow brothers and sisters to hear God's Word and to receive His sacrament. Let's say that this job also places such extraordinary demands on your time that you have to sacrifice time at home with your family, with your spouse, with your children that you have to shirk your God-given responsibilities to them in order to have this well-paying job. Walking away from that job means taking an extraordinary financial hit. But for the sake of following Jesus, that may be the cost that you have to pay. Are you willing to pay it? Count the cost. Let's say that you have a group of friends and you enjoy their company. You have lots and lots of fun with them when you're together. Yet, admittedly, they are not the best influence on you. 
And you began by, by telling yourself, well, maybe I can, I can witness to them, but the more that you think about it honestly, the more that you're realizing that they're winning you over to their way of thinking as opposed to you winning them over for Christ. Or let's say it's a little bit different. Let's say that you do take a firm stand on God's Word and boldly and lovingly and sincerely bear witness to the truth and tell them about their Savior and and you're labeled a hateful, dogmatic zealot for it. And they want nothing to do with you anymore. Following Jesus may cost Relationships with our friends. Are you willing to pay? Count the cost. Let's say that it's a parent, a child, your spouse, your sibling, people who are closest and nearest and dearest to you, and they are straying away or have fallen away from the faith altogether, do you bear faithful witness to God's Word and warn them sincerely and lovingly about the danger that they're putting themselves in, the danger to their souls, even though it may cause a rift in your family that you won't be able to fix? Or do you stay quiet? Yes, the cost of following Jesus may be a relationship with somebody who is near and dear to us, a family member, a child, a spouse. That may be the cost. Are you willing to pay it? And what if it's your life? What if you are confronted with the terrible choice between following Jesus or continuing to live? Now, we may think that, oh, that's not going to happen to me. But brothers and sisters, there are thousands upon thousands of people throughout the history of this world who were faced with that exact choice. So if it came to you, would you pay that cost, the cost of your very life? The things we have, the friends we have, the family members we have, even our very lives, maybe even all of it, is the cost of following Jesus. Are you willing to pay? I don't know about you, but I get a little bit of a pit in my stomach. And my knees get a little bit weak thinking about it. And a chill goes down my spine because I know just how weak I am in my sinful nature if I'm faced with those terrible, awful choices. Jesus or the people I care about. Jesus or my very life. What would I choose? So far we've talked about the cost to us. But brothers and sisters... If that's all we talk about, then yes, it is very scary, but there's one more cost that we need to talk about. One more cost that we need to hear. It's not the cost to us. It's the cost to Him. What did it cost for Him to make you His forever? Was He willing to pay it? Was it too much for him? Was it too much for the Son of God, yes, true God, who fills heaven and earth to humble himself and be born a human being, to have to be fed, and to have to have his diaper, his swaddling clothes changed? Was it too much? 
for Jesus to spend every day of his earthly ministry traveling and preaching and teaching and healing and caring and loving for others, all about others, never about himself, even though by the day opposition against him grew and grew. Was that too much for him? Was it too much for Jesus, the Son of God, to be arrested and put on trial in a kangaroo court to have an unjust sentence of guilty passed upon him and an unjust sentence of death on a cross passed upon him? Was that too much? Was it too much for him to say nothing in the face of all of that and to accept it because that was going to be the price of your salvation and mine? Was it too much for him to bear his back to a Roman flog, to give his hands and his feet to be nailed to a tree? Was it too much for the Son of God to be forsaken by God the Father so that you and I never would be? Was it too much for Jesus, the author of life, to bow his head in death? to give you salvation. To rise from the dead and break death's hold on you. Was all of it too much? Was the cost too high? No. He never faltered. He knew going into it just exactly what it would cost him. And he paid that cost Gladly, and he paid it in full. Sins forgiven is yours through faith in Jesus. Eternal glory is yours through faith in Jesus. And so when you think about the cost of following him, and your knees buckle in nervousness, and when the situation actually arises in your life, when that bill comes due, when you actually do have to pay the cost for following Jesus, and you hesitate, then don't count your cost anymore. Count His. Count His cost, what it cost Him to make you His. Count that cost every single day of your life. And He will strengthen you to pay whatever cost you must pay to follow Him. Brothers and sisters, count the cost. Count yours and count His. Amen. Please stand.